Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and today I want to talk about, honestly, the worst gun control bill that I have seen come out of California since the original gun apocalypse. California is doubling down on the handgun roster, and if California has it their way, there's going to be pretty much nothing left on the roster starting July 1st of 2022, so let's go ahead and talk about it. This channel is proud to be supported by the Firearms Policy Coalition. They are an invaluable resource to this channel and Daily's 2A News. They allow me to reach out, get updates, access information, and if I need to, get clarification on things. Not only are they an invaluable resource to me, but they're an invaluable resource to you because they are out there every single day fighting for our Second Amendment rights. So make sure you check that link in the description box, become a member, and follow them here on YouTube. Their videos that they're putting out are extremely informational. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff and a lot of great content there. I'll link their YouTube channel down below as well. But make sure you become a member and join the fight for our Second Amendment rights. Now, just like always and to be expected, California politicians are being really shady on this one. And that's because this bill on its face seems like it's intended to ease regulations on the roster, when in fact, not only would it not ease regulations, but it would actually create a back door for everything that's on there right now to be taken off. And I'll explain that to you in just a second. So what this bill says on its face is that currently under the regulations for the roster, if you wanna get something put on the roster, that pistol, that firearm has to have the ability to micro stamp uh, in at least two places on the cartridge, a specific serial number or identifying code. So maybe the primer or the case head or something like that, right? There has to be two locations where uh, an imprint or a micro stamp is placed onto a case. This bill seeks to amend that and take it back down to just one area that has to be micro stamped. So maybe the firing pin onto the primer or something like that. Now they're trying to say that this is easing regulations on the, uh, on the roster when in fact there's still no companies out there that are actively making firing pins that will imprint a serial number or anything onto a primer. And we all know that these things are easily defeated. We all know that this a simple small file or something like that can get rid of a micro stamp and that criminals have ways to go around these things so we know that it's an ineffective method but at the same time there's no companies out there right now that are doing it that means nothing new is going to be coming onto the roster or at least that you know i can see in the near future i don't see anything coming out that's going to comply with that right so they're going to take it down from two plus to one simple micro stamp is what they say okay so with that one micro stamp they're saying that it's going to be easier for manufacturers to be able to to, to import into california and make it onto the roster however if you read further on down the bill it actually says that for each new pistol that makes it onto the roster after July 1st of 2022, three existing pistols that don't meet every single requirement must be removed. So if it doesn't have a loaded chamber indicator, a magazine disconnect, if it doesn't have some of the safety features that they're looking for, including micro stamping, then it's gone. So there's your Glocks, there's your 1911s, there's anything else that's on the roster that you like because nothing else on the roster has currently has micro stamping. And if you take a look at 1911s, they don't have loaded chamber indicators or anything like that. So you have to look at this bill in its entirety. So again, it takes the number of micro stamp imprints from two plus down to one, but at the same time for everything new that's added to the roster, it's not a it's not like a suggestion it's a requirement that for every one new pistol they remove three old pistols that's in the bill now let me go ahead and read to you guys directly from the bill so you understand exactly what's going on verbatim and this will help you be a little bit more informed if you want to read uh, the bill in its entirety i'll go ahead and i'll link that down below but we start off with sections four five and six which kind of tell us exactly what the requirements are going to be to get on the roster or at least some of the requirements and each one is commencing july 1st of 2022 for all semi-automatic center fire pistols that are not already listed on the roster pursuant to section 32015 uh, it does not have a Loaded chamber indicator okay so it has to have a loaded chamber indicator uh commencing july 1st 2022 for all center fire or rim fire semi-automatic pistols that are not already listed on the roster pursuant to section 32015 it does not have a magazine disconnect mechanism if it has a detachable 
magazine. So it's going to have a magazine disconnect if it wants to be on the roster. Uh, commencing July 1st, 2022, uh, for all semi-automatic pistols that are not already listed on the roster pursuant to Section 32015, it is not designated and equipped with a micro stamp array of characters used to identify the make, model, and serial number of the pistol etched or otherwise imprinted in one or more places on the interior surface or internal working parts of the pistol and that are transferred by imprinting on each cartridge case when the firearm is fired. Okay, so that's the requirements to be on the pistol, right? So here's the thing, it says commencing July 1st, 2022. That's kind of misleading because you're thinking, okay, everything that was on there before. So because it says uh, for all semi-automatic pistols that are not already listed on the roster. So it makes it seem like those things that are already listed on the roster would be safe. But if you scroll down here to paragraph seven, that's where it actually puts all of those things in jeopardy because all of the things that are already on there, so everything that's already on the roster is eventually going to have to have those things on them. So if they don't already have those features, they're gone. And if you guys know, a Glock does not have a magazine disconnect. So that would be that for that. And a 1911 doesn't have a loaded chamber indicator, at least the ones that I know of don't. So those would be gone as well. And so this kind of explains how those ones are in jeopardy. But again, you have to read this entire bill. So the Department of Justice shall for each semi-automatic pistol newly added to the roster pursuant to section 32015, remove from the roster exactly three semi-automatic firearms lacking one or more of the applicable features described in paragraphs four, five, and six of the subdiv uh, subdivision B and added to the roster before July 1st, 2022. So it tells you right there, if it doesn't have those features and it was added be before July 1st of 2022 for each newly added pistol, they have to remove three of those. Okay. So three. Uh, and then notwithstanding uh, the paragraphs, each semi-automatic pistol removed from the roster pursuant to this subdivision shall be considered an unsafe handgun. The attorney general shall remove semi-automatic pistols from the roster pursuant to the subdivision in reverse order of their dates of addition to the roster, beginning with the semi-automatic pistol added to the roster on the earliest date and continuing until each semi-automatic pistol on the roster includes each of the applicable features described in those paragraphs. So basically what they're saying is you add one, you remove three, and you continue to do this until everything that's on the roster has every one of those features, including micro stamping. Now, like I was saying before, this is one of the worst bills that I've ever seen. Uh, that's assuming that anything new would come out that has a micro stamp on it, because if companies are stupid enough to actually make something with a micro stamp on it and try and get it added to the roster, you're going to lose three things that are already there. So you add one, you lose three. You add another one, you lose three. Eventually, until it gets to the point where everything is micro stamped, everything has these ridiculous safety features. And here's the crazier part. None of this applies to law enforcement. Okay, so these are things that are considered unsafe to the state of California. They're no longer safe for you to use, but our you know, protected law enforcement class, they're allowed to have whatever they want because it's safe enough for them to use. It's just not safe enough for you to use. So without a loaded chamber indicator, it's just not safe enough. You know, Without a magazine disconnect, it's just not safe enough. Without being imprinted uh, with a serial number on the casing, it's just not safe enough. How does that even work into safety? It doesn't make something more or less safe to have a number imprinted. I can imprint 3,000 numbers on a case. I can imprint, I can put my picture on the case and it doesn't even make it less or uh, less, you know, more safe. That's what I'm trying to look for here. So, I mean, I could have a little laser engraver inside and as the round gets chambered in, it goes and it puts my picture on it. It says, hey, this is this guy. This is my address. This is my social security number. This is, you know, my entire history from birth on. It's not going to make it any more safe. So that is just to, completely out there to me. I just don't understand how I, well, I guess I do understand. They don't really care. It's not about safety. It's about restriction, right? It's about control. They don't care that there's numbers on there. They just know that nobody's going to be willing to do it. And so the roster is going to continue to shrink 
that works out perfect for their agenda because they don't want them in the state anyway. And so whatever they can do to kind of work around things, they're going to go ahead and do it. So again, on its face, this bill seems like it would ease restrictions by only making uh, you know, it applicable to one spot on the uh, primer or something like that. Again, it seems like it's easing restrictions. If you read further on in the bill, no, it doesn't. It actually makes it much, much worse. So I wanted to make you guys aware that this is out there. Uh, FPC has also talked about this on their YouTube channel and a bunch of other stuff as well. So it's well, you know, if you're willing to hop out of here and go over to the FPC uh, YouTube channel and check out some of their information, I think you guys would be uh, pleasantly surprised with everything that you would learn. But uh, it's a it's a tough one, and we're gonna have to battle back against this because uh, there's no way we should let this bill continue. Uh, the bill, I believe, uh, just went through committee, so you know it's something that. People need to be up on and whatever you can do to fight back against it, do it.